think the most important thing to know about the brain to start is that it's amazingly dynamic. It's probably the most exciting thing that we've learned in neuroscience in the last 20 years. Whatever we do, we should change our brain. So no matter what you're doing, whether it's good or bad, you're altering your brain. And that's called neuroplasticity. So what MindUp does is it capitalizes on that neuroplasticity by giving the brain of a child or, or an adult, whoever's choosing to practice it, the opportunity to practice taking a brain break, to center back on whatever feelings, whatever experience, whatever sensations they have going on, and just have that moment of respite. We put people in the MRI scanner. We actually induce stress by showing them video clips from movies. We induced uh, fear, anger, sadness, and happiness, and we index the brain. We actually also map the heart and heart activity. And we showed that in combination, people who were practicing um, things such as yoga, mindfulness, meditation, were much better at mitigating their stress. So they were more of an observer to these stressful uh, situations. And we didn't see big dynamic swings in brain activity, and we didn't see big changes in heart. So they were able to participate and feel these, in these emotional situations, but without reacting in a really strong fashion. And we compared those to people who were recreational runners, who did just as much activity, who were out fit doing, and in that runner group, we did not see that same ability to mitigate stress. Those people became highly stressed out by these different environments we put them into. In each of these different activities, what we're seeing is better activity in that prefrontal cortex, these very high level areas that enable cognition, enable planning ahead, um, and enable us to determine how we react and maybe suppress an initial reaction that might not be so positive and then be able to use a more positive type of reaction. That all is coming from the prefrontal cortex. We actually have two different and they're both functionally and neuroanatomically distinct memory systems in our brain. So the one that we use in school or that we're supposed to use in school is based on a, a brain structure called the hippocampus. And so this is kind of our classical memory. The hippocampus is working with the frontal and the prefrontal cortices to allow us to learn things like long division and your phone number, your zip code, things that we can kind of verbally recollect quite easily. The neuroanatomy of the brain, that's all hippocampal memory. So it's very fact-based and it's usually able to be um, conveyed in words. Now there's this other memory system that is based in the amygdala, and this is where, this is an old brain system, we think. We think it's very important evolutionarily. It's the system that kept us safe, those strong emotional memories. So this is scary, this made me angry, this made me really happy, those kind of very powerful emotions. If you think about a traumatic event in your life, what you're really doing is you're remembering, you're encoding that event, again, through this amygdala-based memory system, which is extraordinarily powerful. I mean, this is the area of the brain that we know is responsible for things like post-traumatic stress disorder. And so what you're having to do now is counter that. Now, again, the good news is your brain is massively neuroplastic. So while it might not be easy, you can certainly um, participate in mindful um, meditation and mind-up types of programs and slowly, with time, you're then able to mitigate these powerful emotional memories and start shifting back over to this more rational memory system. And we know neuroscientifically this is a period of time of heightened capacity for neuroplasticity. Um, you, know, you and I are okay at plasticity, but kids are really, really good at it. And so by giving them those skills early, they're just able to get them stronger and stronger and stronger as they continue to practice them throughout development. And then it gives them tools that they can use as, as adults to really make good decisions, uh, to be able to pay attention, to be able to be happy and grateful participants in society. So that's, it's all kind of a goodness, but it really comes from starting early.